Galen Fink and Lori Hagenbush grew up on eastern Kansas farms. Through the example of their parents, they learned the importance of a strong work ethic and discipline in all aspects of life. Through their involvement in their youth organizations, they understood the importance of sound decisions, business, and leadership. After graduation from Northeast Oklahoma A&M and Kansas State University, Galen went on to become the manager of the purebred unit at K-State. He met Lori, a student in animal sciences, and after she earned her master's degree in reproductive physiology, the two were married in 1975. Lori was hired by the Kansas Angus Association and continued to serve Kansas Angus breeders for nine years as the first woman secretary field person. Lori, we really appreciate everything you've done for the Kansas Angus Association. You're always at the meetings. You're always at the extra activities. You represent Kansas throughout the United States. You're on every committee at the national level and we do really appreciate you. Through the late 70s and 80s, Galen and Lori worked hard, lived simply, and saved what they could, never spending money on luxury items like soda pops and potato chips. Beginning with just a few cows, every available dollar went back into the herd, even to the exclusion of buying land or equipment. By the mid 80s, the Finks had grown to about 20 cows. During a struggling economy, and unable to obtain a loan from any other banker, fellow Kansas Angus member Bill New supported Galen and Lori and loaned them the money to purchase 30 head from Montana's Highline Angus to complete the foundation. Galen and Lori knew to become successful, staying innovative would be key. In 1988, they were the first to implant embryos in recipient herds. The embryo work made it possible for the Finks to expand their female base without the expense of more land. In 1990, they left their jobs to devote full time to their operation and to their newest addition, Megan. The Finks' reputation would be based on the cow herd. The ideal cow would be practical, functional, productive and structurally well balanced with the inherent and proven ability to breed, milk and produce pounds of beef. They decided theirs would be a total artificial insemination program using only high accuracy proven sires. In the 90s, Galen served as the Kansas Angus Association president and continued to judge state and national shows. Lori worked as a representative for American Breeders Service was elected to the Kansas State Fair Board and began her term as the Kansas Angus Auxiliary President. Very key people of the Kansas Angus um, Association and Lori specifically about your contributions to the auxiliary. When you think of the Kansas Angus Auxiliary, those of you that know Lori, uh, maybe know her currently has her position as treasurer. And what you may not know is that that position was held for a number of years by Sondra McCurry. And we consider that position kind of semi-permanent and actually changed our bylaws to allow that because Lori is the rock. When you think of the Kansas Angus Auxiliary, you think of the rock. She's always kind of your go-to person. If I needed a teammate, and I uh, asked Lori several times to serve on committees with me, she's the gal you want to be beside, your, beside you because she's proactive, she's dependable, she takes the lead, and she never is seeking the limelight. She's always doing what she does for the better good of the organization and the people in it. So um, hats off to Lori for her contributions to the auxiliary. Looking to diversify, the Finks did so into a whole new arena, delivering beef directly to the customer. In 1994, their Little Apple Brewing Company restaurant opened in Manhattan and it's been a Kansas Beef Council and Certified Angus Beef Brand award-winning restaurant ever since. Drawing from their own youth involvement and the advisors that supported them, Galen and Lori became involved in the junior activities of the Kansas Junior Angus Association. You know, as far as their involvement in the junior program, uh, I, think, I think they've done it uh, a lot like most of us ought to. Uh, I, know, I know when Megan was young, would they they had uh, just a whole tribe of girls around them where she would bring her friends and get them involved. And, and uh, 
you know, if you stop and think about that, uh, in some cases that might have been the only opportunity those girls had to, to be involved in something like that. And, and uh, even if they don't go into agriculture, they'll take those uh, experiences and that knowledge that they gain uh, through what Galen and Lori did for them. And, and they'll take that and they'll, they'll be uh, ambassadors to some extent uh, for, for the beef industry or the Angus industry or, or agriculture in general. And you, you sure have to appreciate that. Megan continued to keep up with her parents' busy life and where some kids may become disinterested, it was only natural that it would instead fuel Megan's desire to become even more involved. A member of the National Junior Angus Association since the year she was born, Megan became a very active member in NJAA and the Kansas Junior Angus Association, serving on her state's board of directors. Megan's true gift is her work with younger members just as her parents have always done, Megan is most happy when she can encourage a young person to become involved in their youth association. Continuing to be innovative, the Finks believe that whatever the customer's strategy, they would provide the support. Developing feeder calf sales, commercial female sales, and relationships with feedlots and alliances. Having focused on their operation and their customers, Galen and Lori realized they had grown to implanting more than 1,000 embryos and selling 600 bulls a year, all out of the same 40-acre rented base. In 2006, they found the location to build Fink Beef Genetics from scratch, 30 miles to the north in Randolph. They replaced fences, cleared the overgrown cedars, and made major improvements. The new decade came with numerous awards and recognition for their years of work toward bettering the industry, becoming one of the first purebred breeders to video their bulls for auction. The reduced amount of help and reduced stress on the bulls was of such benefit that many other operations followed suit, and being the first to provide a three-year guarantee on their bulls was further proof that the Finks would continue to align themselves to the needs of their customers. Galen and Lori are both industry leaders, and, and for sure they are forward-thinking people, uh, not, only, not only for uh, Angus cattle, but for the industry in general. Uh, I think they're very deserving of, of this award, and, and uh, I'm, I'm really glad to call, uh, both Jody and I are glad to call them friends. And I guess with this being said, maybe I even have to say that Galen's kind of nice too. Thank you. Fink Beef Genetics includes more than 1,000 acres of pasture and grass with 300 head of beef cows. They implant 1,000 to 1,200 embryos per year into cooperator herds and sell over 600 bulls from an embryo calf production enterprise. They have one of the largest embryo transplant programs in the United States. Working side by side, Galen, Lori, and Megan have grown Fink Beef Genetics to be ranked in the top 25 largest seed stock producers by the NCBA since 2004, all while contributing their time and energy to the organizations of the livestock industry. To attain and retain this level of success, the plan has remained the same since day one. Think outside the box. Get up and do things differently than you do every other day. The way you do business today doesn't necessarily make you successful tomorrow. Galen Fink.